Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our uh, service this morning. Uh, we invite you to, if you're able, to please stand and join us in song. you could be a part of our service this morning, whether you're here in person or online. We welcome you this morning. We will be sharing the Lord's table with communion later on in the service. For those of you that are at home, if you would like to prepare something to join us, um, you have time over the next few songs to, um, to prepare yourselves. And as we sing, I uh, just hope that uh, God blesses you this morning. Strength indeed is small, child of God. 
Please be seated. As we prepare to receive communion, you know, coming right on the heels of, of Good Friday and Easter, I um, feel like rehearsing what it's about is, uh, is something that, that you know, we've just done it. Um, but as I was thinking about communion, about the sacrifice of Jesus, I actually, my mind went to Psalm 139 this week. O Lord, you've examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. I was thinking about the fact that that can be a real comfort for some and a real like <laughs> worry for others. Um, or both for the same person, depending on what's going on. Um, but you go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Even there, no matter what you're saying and doing, that God places his hand of blessing on us. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride on the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. The psalm goes on for the sake of time this morning. I will not. Um, except just to say, as we come, we are reminded that there is nowhere we could run from a God filled with this love. The sacrifice that, that we uh, eat, or the, the symbol of sacrifice that we eat and drink this morning is a reminder of just how far God will go to, to, to chase you down, how much God loves you. And so I hope that this morning, if you are here and you feel completely alone, that as we eat this and drink this, you will be reminded that you are not. If you feel completely unseen, you will be reminded that there is a God who sees every part of you and loves you. If you feel shame and maybe wish you weren't seen, that you'll find a God meeting you there who is aware of all of that and says, I love you and I will do anything I can to make a way for you to be with me. Just come. So if you are... are if you're open to receiving Jesus, if you have received Jesus, if you are living life with Jesus, if even this morning you said, I haven't been, but I want to, we invite you to receive this bread and drink this uh, cup with us. Um, I'm realizing now that I hadn't actually talked to Vera. Do we have people arranged to pass stuff out or not? This is what happens when we don't actually talk before a service. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. And so I'm going to just, can you help? You know, oh, okay, Wilford, Ursula, and Gib, thank you. Uh, I've got some helpers now that we'll be able to pass it out. Um, I, I'm going to pray, and then we will pass out the bread, and then just hold on to it, and then we will eat it together. And then we will pass out the cup and hold on to it, and we will drink it together. Let's pray. God, your love is overwhelming. Um, I know there are times that I just wish I could hide from you because I'm not happy with how I have been, what I have said, what I have done. Thank you that your love pursues us even into the darkest places and all of the darkness that is seen on the cross. You are there in it, but not in a way that is seeking to condemn, but is, is loving and drawing us out into the light because even that darkness is as light to you. God, as we eat this bread, a reminder of your broken body, broken for us, so that we could know your love and enjoy life with you, as we drink this cup, 
and of re representing your blood shed for us so that we could enjoy and know life with you. Uh, would you, by your spirit, speak your life and your peace into uh, our life individually and our life together? This is, uh, we, are, we are united in Jesus as we are here today. Thank you so much again for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. This is bread. That's all it is. We don't see magic in it, but we see an opportunity to create space for God's spirit to do his work as we eat this remembrance together. Let us eat.
after uh, Jesus ate with his disciples the night before he uh, was crucified, he passed around a cup, said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as in remembrance of me. And since then, for 2,000 years, people have been drinking, reminding ourselves of God's love for us, of our unity in Christ because of his covenant. Let us drink in remembrance and with thanksgiving. Uh, we have uh, started again passing uh, offering plates just on communion Sundays for a special offering that goes to our compassion fund. And so I'm going to just kind of start them up here and they'll make their way to the back. Anything you can contribute goes directly to that, um, that fund today. There is no pressure to contribute. Uh, and we are going to sing while the plates go around.
Please be seated. Um, we are going to pray for our kids and our youth in just a minute as they head downstairs. The kids up to grade 5, downstairs to their program, our youth, uh, grade 6 to 12, will go to the portable. Um, before I do that, just a few reminders. Um, a special welcome to you if you are new among us. We have a couple of things for newcomers. First of all, uh, you can fill out a card in front of you. Let us know that you are here. We also have an online version if you click the QR code that's in the, on the seat. In, in the seat in front of you. You can fill that out online. And we have a newcomer's uh, lunch that's coming up next Sunday after the service. Uh, if you are interested in a free lunch, if you're interested in sticking around after you get a chance to meet some of our deacons and hear a little bit more about Covenant, we would love to have you stick around um, after the service next Sunday. Uh, you can sign up online or you can sign up there's a sheet in the uh, in the lobby near the door on your way out you can sign up there um today after the service immediately after or very soon after there's an inspire makerspace camp leaders meeting for those who are able to stick around and even if you're like i'm not sure i can help but you want more information about it you can stick around after uh that's today um earth day is coming up which seemingly doesn't have that much to do with us here, except that we are going to do our road cleanup during the week of Earth Week. Uh, Covenant cleans up LaFontaine Road, basically from Esso Station to Esso Station um, on LaFontaine Road. And if you'd like to help with that, you can do it anytime during that week. Talk to Elise, and she'll get you vests for safety and garbage bags and gloves, and then I'll sign you to a portion of the road, and then you can go out some point that week when it's not raining and, and do, some, uh, do some cleanup. Uh, so if you'd like to help with that, then talk to Elise Robitaille. Um, very quickly, there are some retreats coming up at Kakwa. Senior High Retreat is coming up. Be praying for the students and leaders who are going to that. There's a young adult retreat. Um, May 1st, regist- it's working now. Okay. <laughs> On, on, on May 1st, registration is opening for a couple of retreats. There's a 50-plus kind of active retreat that's happening early in September, and then two weekends of what they call retreats for seniors, a little less active. Um, uh, but registration for those is opening May 1st, and they tend to fill up fairly quickly. So if you're interested, you can go on uh, the COCWA's website and look for that. And th- this is a huge advance notice because registration doesn't open until September 1st, but they are doing a mother-daughter retreat in October uh, for basically ages 12 and up is what they're, they're looking at. And so if moms want to take daughters, daughters want to take moms, or if you want to adopt somebody for the retreat and, and plan to go, that's happening uh, in October and registration opens September 1st. So Those are some of the things that we have going on. Um, Let me pray for some of the requests that have gone out this week for our kids and for our youth, and then for Brent as he comes to share this morning. God, we come today glad that we are present with you. Glad to be able to be here together, whether uh, we are online or in person. Thank you that you know where each one of us is as we come into this space and you are big enough to meet us wherever we are. As we read in the psalm, there's nowhere we can go that is away from your presence. Um, God, help us to be aware of it. We ask that you would especially um, be present and help those who are struggling to be aware of your presence. We pray for Bonnie as she got some Challenging news this past week for Dee as she's got an appointment this week to find out more about when her heart surgery will be. Pray for Peter as uh, there's, we got a good report about his cancer, but he's in so much pain with his hip that needs to be replaced. Would you help that to happen soon? We pray for Kevin and Denise as they're still in England uh, dealing with stuff after Kevin's father's uh, death and for Denise's sister, Pip, who is struggling. We give you thanks that Licio is recovering Um, and we give praise that uh, Joan is healing. We pray for Lisa as she hopes for full-time work, and God, I know there are other requests that um, we've been asked not to to say out loud. You know all of the details. We thank you for when the results um, seem to be in line with healing and, and things being better in this world, And we ask that you would sustain us and be close to us when things don't go the way we want them to be that seem to go counter to your shalom in this world. 
God, we thank you for our youth and for our kids. They're such an important part of who we are. Um, God, I just ask that you would bless them incredibly as they go to their programs now. And God, thank you for Brent's work to prepare, um, as that you would speak through him and give us ears to hear from your spirit as he comes to share. In Jesus' name, amen. Kids and youth, you guys can head to your programs now. Well, good morning. I'm glad to be speaking today, and today we're going to be speaking about the joy of community. I'm just going to give myself some space here. Um, The joy of community at work. And we have a kind of a starting point with a verse today, which is from Ephesians chapter 14. Chapter 4, verse 16, and it says this. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. I love how the Bible uses the analogy of of the human body uh, to describe us, which is the church, like, if you look at the, at the human body, it's a vast, complicated system, right? It's amazing to think how God created us. And if there's any health professionals here, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to give a couple quick stats, but um, I, I'm not a health professional. My mom was a nurse, but, uh, uh, my, but the body's muscular system has about 650 muscles in it, right? Um, that help in movement and blood flow. Uh, the skeletal system has over 200 bones in it which are all connected by tendons and ligaments and cartilage. And then we are made up of, I think it's, what is it, 37 trillion cells. So it's it's amazing. We're a vast system, our bodies, right? And I know Jesus told, when he spoke, he spoke in a lot of, like, what is stories, about in parables, right? And um, all kinds of different stories, but it seemed like a lot of them were about gardening. Great for spring as we're getting there. Anyone start their gardening inside yet? Do any of that stuff? Getting those garden boxes ready? <laughs> yes, I see that hand. Okay. And, but the thing is that um, Paul... Uh, after, uh, when you look at his letters later on, he, uh, he uses not gardening, but he does talk a lot about the body, the human body. Uh, and today I'm going to look at this while relating it to something that has, is a focus to some in our society, which is fitness and exercise. And when we look back at that verse from Ephesians chapter 4, it says, Paul, he says, this about the body of believers. We are a body of believers who fit together perfectly. That is beautiful. Not that we are perfect, but we fit together perfectly as some kind of like maybe funny looking, like awkward puzzle, right? And as we fit together, we, we now know that through science, many parts of the human body are like intricately connected, right? So, um, I have one quote from the Science Learning Hub, which is part of the Wolf Malcolm Institute of Educational Research. It quotes this, a body system is a collection of parts able to work together to serve a common purpose. It references growth, reproduction, and survival. I think we can relate that to the church body as well, but I think the church is more than just that. Um, But I want to say this today. Um, You are here. Uh, You are part of the church. Uh, you are a piece of our funny-looking puzzle. And I also want to say this, that you are valuable and you are loved, whether you believe that or not. And you perfectly fit together in this puzzle, right? You perfectly fit together with the rest of us imperfect people because we are the body. And I get it. Like, sure, you have flaws, I have flaws too, so is the person next to you. Uh, We all have our flaws, but you are 100%, as even John was referencing today, not planned, Psalm 139, right? You are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
And you're fearfully and wonderfully made with giftings and abilities, whether you know what they are or you don't, whether other people know what they are or appreciate them or don't, God knows. And you hold value whether you do or you don't do, okay? So if you're coming today, though, thinking that you have nothing to contribute to the body, I want to flat out say that you're wrong, okay? Um, so, fitness. I don't know if you can tell, but I am not the most buff person in this room, okay? I'm not the most buff, but I do know a few things about working out. Say, like, I brought a prop with me today. If I did bicep curls, okay, I brought a, this is just a five pound weight. I just had surgery, so I'm not allowed to lift more than 10 pounds right now, right? So <laughs> um, I got my five pound weight here, right? And let's see um, that I did this every day, okay? I just did bicep curls, no other workouts. What would happen to my bicep? It would get bigger, right? It would grow. Um, you guys start looking like Arnold, right? Arnold Schwarzenegger. And um, by the way, did you know I, the word muscle comes from the word, I'm totally going to mispronounce a few words today, but musculus, musculus, and it actually means in Latin, little mouse, uh, which in the ancient world, they actually thought that the bicep looked like a little mouse that was like inside your arm. So there you go. That's where that came from. Uh, if you learn nothing else today. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the bicep, um, okay, so let's say this. Let's say we just did bicep curls all the time, and we did this every day, and I did this for a few hours. How would my bicep feel after a while? Tired, right? It would feel sore, right? Um, I got this quote from the US, UCLA Health, um, but it says experts recommend that you need at least one day off from your daily workout routine each week. Does that sound like any spiritual practice that you know? Right? So what's that spiritual practice? Sabbath, right? Rest, right? Uh, even if we look at uh, Mark 2, right? Jesus said the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So for those here who are those relentless worker bees here at the church, the ones who tirelessly, tirelessly give, right, who work so hard and so much, you know who you are. Bless you guys. But rest is not only okay, it is good, it is blessed, it is needed, okay? So let's go back to my bicep curls. What about if I just did bicep curls, how are my legs doing? Are, are my legs all worked out? Like, am I ready for a 10K run? No, right? I haven't even worked on my breathing or anything like that, right? Um, how about if, um, let's pick, pick up something heavy to lift. Oh, how many people have lifted uh, like a pull-out couch before? Yeah, like those things are heavy, right? Yeah, is my back and my core ready for if I'm just doing bicep curls? Am I ready? How about a complicated test? Give me, give me a complicated subject. What do we got today? Trig. Trig? Yeah, I was never good at math. But... Um, that's math, right? Yeah, no, just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, it's, that's, um, like, by doing bicep curls, my mind isn't ready either, right? And this is the thing. I'm going to put this down now. I've done my, I've done my workout for today, right? Um, is my body ready for all the world throws at me if I'm just working one part of my body? See, our church is a body that needs all of its parts to be working, to be functioning well. And that, that, by that, I mean not just doing jobs, right? Though there are what I would call like chores here, and uh, this, church, that, this church that we would love more people to do, but that's not really it, right? It's more than, than just that. Because here's the thing. I think that one of, we're one of many churches that make up the bigger church that have the same problem. We're not alone in this, where we sometimes only have certain parts of the body working for whatever reason, and certain abilities and giftings even highlighted, like the ones that show up on stage, right? The, the person speaking or the, te the, the music and that kind of stuff, and maybe other abilities and giftings get, com uh, get completely like neglected or at worst rejected. 
Or we have some in our church that at time carry so much of the load, like the bicep, not resting. And we have certain parts of the body that may be atrophy from lack of use. Maybe we even forgot what our giftings were because we let them rest so long or didn't know how to use our gifts and neglected them maybe or don't even know what our giftings are to begin with. I know that we aren't functioning as a church to our full potential if all the body isn't involved though. Because we are created to function together. And that does mean to, yes, work together. Just like working a muscle or whatever part of the body you are. And that doesn't just mean in this building, it doesn't just mean programs, but it might mean both of those things at times. See, I think what can actually happen is we can go off and do beautiful things individually outside of the church. Maybe great things for the kingdom. Awesome. We bless you. Like, we bless you with that stuff. That's awesome. But there is a deep-rooted connection I think we can miss. When we establish as a community, when we work side by side in the name of Jesus, in the big and the small, in the practical or the impractical, and allow others to join in that work too. Like in the up and down story of uh, Nehemiah. Uh, in Nehemiah, it, he, he was tasked by God in the re- to lead in the rebuilding of the wall in Jerusalem after their exile. And in chapter 4, it talks um, there's a verse, 4 verse 6 says, We rebuilt the wall till it reached half of its height, and the people worked with all of their hearts. They put their heart and their effort into what they were doing. And then we look at it two chapters later in, in, in chapter 6. It says, The nation saw what they did together and saw that God was in it. Like, can you imagine what that could look like? Like, if, if the church, if people around town saw us working for the kingdom together with all of our heart and saw that God was the centerpiece of all of that. Or an Acts, right? The Acts church, when, when the church grew and everyone was in it together, they were committed, they were praying, they were working, they were selling what they had, they were doing, they were engaging with God together. And maybe you don't need to sell everything, but maybe it's our time and efforts and giftings that need to just be invested Because work is part of life's purpose. We see that from the Garden of Eden, right? In Genesis chapter 2, the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to watch Netflix and eat snacks. (laughs) No, I'm just making sure you guys are still paying attention there, right? No, to work and to take care of it. Like even Jesus, he called us to do from loving your neighbor, serving others. How many know that takes a ton of work, right? Um, Or... uh, there's lots of other things too, like, uh, I lost my page. Oh, here we are. Uh, so he said things like going the second mile. Uh, Jesus often said to go, to give, to serve, to sell, to proclaim. Even feeding the 5,000, when Jesus did that miracle, um, it says this in Matthew chapter 14, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. And then all the disciples went... No, it says, then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people, right? He put the disciples to work, to do. I, I want to say this, though. Um, we are not all created as the same body part. If I'm the bicep, I need legs, and if you're the legs, you need an ankle, and if you're the ankle, you need a heart or a kidney or a pinky finger, and each has its own function. As it says in Romans 12, for just as each of us has one... Um, has one body with many members, and these members do not have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy according with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. Teaching, teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. I don't even think this is an exhaustive list. But when we work, it may look different from someone else's work based on how we are made and how we are wired. And each way we are made is important. And that means like even if you have low energy or it hurts to move or you deal with anxiety or you have a disability or are shy, not a good singer, you don't see value in yourself, 1 Corinthians says this, that the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. 
And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. So don't undervalue yourself and don't undervalue others. And don't, don't make excuses for not putting your part of the body to work. Don't undervalue yourself. See, we need to be a church that welcomes everyone to be involved. And we need to do this by valuing more giftings and singing and teaching. And we need to pick up our mantle, even if it's maybe been years since it's been picked up. And to work with what God has given us, even in the season that, whatever season that is in, right? To build God's kingdom here in Penetang. If you want to watch the church grow in our town, this is how. The church has always been a place where people can come and connect and not be put to work as if it was some way to use people. It can be really misused, right? But instead invited to allow their giftings to build up the, sh- the church, to build up each other. For your purpose is fulfilled when you do what you're created to do and to be who you're created to be in community. As Leslie Newbegin puts it, to accomplish their purpose rooted in and led back to a belief in community. So now... I want to talk about, um, let's go back to the bicep. And uh, in Matthew 11, Jesus does talk about rest, right? He says, come to me all who are wearied and burdened and I will give you rest. I've seen the side of the church where people stop doing and they become guests and not hosts and they stop serving and they stop using their gifts and it disadvantages the church. And people become disconnected, the church becomes a Sunday show or boring, But I also have seen people work hard and neglect rest. Rest in Greek is going to be a word I can't pronounce. Uh, (laughs) This is my second word of the day. Uh, It's Anna, I think it's the next slide there, Joe. Uh, Anna Powell, I'm going to say it is. Um, Oh, did I not put it in the slide? That's okay. Okay, so uh, it means uh, to, uh, this is the word in Greek that Jesus used um, when he says, come to me and I'll give you rest. It means to pause or to refresh. So I think we need to find rest, all of us, right? And rest is not Netflix, or your phone, or Facebook, or doing chores, you know, when you have some spare time, or going shopping. Rest is taking time to pause, and to quiet yourself down, and to rest with God. To find peace in and through Him. As John Mark Comer puts it, to ruthlessly eliminate the hurry and the distractions in our life to find that space to rest, to force it to happen, right? Because the world will take that away from you. You have to, you have to ruthlessly go at it, to, to soak in God's presence in your life. And when we come to work from a place of godly rest within our giftings and abilities in a Jesus-centered community, we find purpose, we find joy, we find strength, and we find that special community and connection that we desire deep inside of our bones. Okay, I want to tell you another gym story, okay? Um, I actually at one point had a gym membership when I used to live in Barrie. And I remember um, I was going to the gym, I was learning all the machines, I was being diligent with it, I was getting ripped, and by that I meant my muscles were not invisible. Um, But over time, I started to lose motivation, okay? Um, I started to lose motivation. I'm not sure what triggered it, but my workouts became shorter, They became less frequent. And our gym celebrated members with free food. Okay, so they would have pizza and bagels at the front desk. And I I remember when I was getting less motivated, I would go in, I would force myself, I'm like, I'm going to go work out, get on the treadmill for five minutes, and then I would get unmotivated, grab a couple slices of pizza, and head out the door. <laughs> and I would go back, and I did this a couple times, right? Like, I'm going to do it this time. And so I try to go run on the treadmill. doesn't work. You know, go grab a couple slices. And you can see how this is doing the opposite of what I want, right? Um, and I wonder if this is where some of us are at with church. Like, we ran the treadmill for a long time. We did, we served, we did it diligently. Bless you guys for that. I know some of you have done that for years, right? And maybe you got tired and overused or burnt out or frustrated, and maybe you don't even know what caused you to lose motivation or to use your giftings in the church.
But now we come for the coffee and the message, and that's it. That's our, that's our pizza in a five-minute run. Uh, and pizza in a five-minute run disadvantages the body. It hurts you. And because we are a body, it hurts you, it hurts me, it hurts the person next to you because we are connected. But working side by side, working together builds community and connection. Just like working out allows our muscles and tendons and everything else to function well together. So, this is my take at home. This is my one take at home. I only have, I think I might have two here, but um, here they are. I invite you to be part of something in the church where you, you are using your gifts in some way if you aren't already. That j- just isn't sitting and listening to a sermon on Sunday. Not for the programs or for the building or for covenant church, but for each other. And ultimately, it will be for you. And maybe that thing doesn't even exist yet. Maybe some of you are visionaries. Maybe some of you are dreamers and you have ideas that we need to hear. Work with that. Work with that. Maybe you have a talent to bless the church that we need a home for. We don't have a space for it right now. Work with that. Maybe you have practical skills, or maybe you have the most impractical skills. Um, and work with those. Maybe you have, all you have is a tired body and time, and you have no idea where to start. Like, talk to me, talk to John, talk to our deacons, elders. Like, let us try to find some space there. Or maybe you're just tired and overly busy, and I encourage you to find your true rest. But try to be part of something for all our sake. And if you are doing a lot, if you are part of that group that does everything, I encourage you to rest. For you become connected to the body when you work with the body from a place of rest. When we work together, we create bonds. Like, think how close the disciples must have been. We learn from each other. We work, like, I think work will maybe even not feel like work in some cases. When we have that community... And work actually makes people want to be part of it. I I, um, finished reading a book called Next Sunday. Uh, It's by Nancy Beach and and her daughter. And and they they talk about uh, where they think the church is going. And to get connected to Jesus, connected to a church, I think the traditional way is like invite someone to church, get them to meet Jesus, and then kind of plug them in, right? They suggest that it might actually be the opposite now in a way. Like, you know, people in our community, actually, there's a desire in some ways to serve their community, right? And when we have ways to serve where people can get, come in and get plugged in, they find Jesus through that, right? So anyways, I, I, I'll remind you again with that, one last, with that first verse again. It's Ephesians 4, verse 16. It says, He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. So I hope today was not, is not some manipulative way of getting you to be used. I never want that. I'd rather you actually like just chuck the sermon <laughs> and forget it if you feel that way. Um, I don't ever want this to be a place where we get grumpy for people not pulling their weight either. We are ultimately a place harboring the love and grace of Jesus. And you're welcomed and loved no matter what, always. And I want to honor you guys. I know so many of you have done a lot, a lot, and are busy and are tired. And church is not all that you have on your minds. But I do know that a healthy community involves working side by side for the kingdom of God. And I think it's irresponsible to neglect that reality. So I invite you to step into whatever your heart is on this matter, whether, whether it is rest or whether it is work. So I'm going to pray. And in a second, the team is going to come back up here. Um, we're going to do something today um, where sometimes in these cases where we're like, hey, we, you know, come help with something. We put a sign-up sheet up or like we just say, come talk to me or John. And we're actually going to pass our own clipboards today during... Um, during the last song, and it's not you signing up to, like, officially be part of anything. It's just saying, I'm interested. That's all it is. And, you know, you can put down what you're interested in. There's a list on there, or you can just put, I don't know, leave it blank, and we'll, we'll connect with you. Um, 
And like there's a few areas I'll, I'll highlight that are kind of chores that do need to get done and we're, we're running out of people for it. It's, one of them is maintenance. Do you know that we, ha we have a great maintenance team here? Like, like Wilfred and Bill, like, do you guys know it's Bill Byers' birthday, by the way? Yes. Happy birthday, Bill. <laughs> uh, like, they work tirelessly at this kind of stuff, you know, and, um, and like, even, like, our tellers, like, the people who, like, like, how many people know how to count here? People know how to count? <laughs> I said I'm not good at math, but, <laughs> but uh, we do need tellers as well. Like, we're, we're, like, on skeleton staff on that right now, but... Honestly, dream bigger. Like, dream into all kinds of stuff. Let's see where God leads us. To, but the key is to work together so we can build those bonds, build those connections as we do things side by side. It's so beautiful. Um, like, I see it in some of the ministry areas I work in. Like, we've built, like, a huge, great, like, youth team where we have right now. Like, we are intricately connected now, and it's just beautiful to see, right? And, um, but there's lots of areas of this church where, where you can get connected. So I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to welcome the team back up, and we'll do that. So let's pray together. Um, God, thank you so much for how much you love us, God. Father, how much uh, you welcome us into rest. God, help us to learn to rest well. God, um, rest in you, no matter what space we're in, God. And Father, I pray that you will help us um, Learn to work and work together, God. Father, I pray for us to build those bonds, those connections. Um, God, I thank you for, I know that we are a church that desires this, and there's so many people that are doing so much, God. Father, I pray that nobody feels the shame or guilt from this, God, today. That's not the intention, God. Father, I pray that you will um, just guide us in working well together as a body, God. So thank you. Thank you for everyone that is here and how much you love them, and how much they are part of things, they have value, and all that stuff, God. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thanks for uh, being together today. Uh, just a reminder, if you can stick around for the Inspire meeting, it's happening very soon after. Uh, you can sign up for the newcomer's lunch in, uh, in the lobby. You can contact Elise if you want to help with the road cleanup. Uh, if you can contribute to our shared financial stuff, there is a QR code that you can click on to give online. You can click Give on our website. If you're online, there's a link in the YouTube description. You can drop something in the box at the back. There's all kinds of ways to contribute financially. Um, if you'd like someone to pray with you, uh, Ursula is going to be in the prayer room just up here uh, on to the right up here. Um, I know that sometimes when you know we, we go to a passage like that in Scripture, depending on where you're coming from, it'll feel a little bit differently. I'm going to just read something Paul says at the beginning of 2 Thessalonians because this is true. Like Brent and I have a, a meeting with other church leaders in our, in our area on Wednesday. And um, this, is, this is us when we go somewhere else and talk about you behind your back. Um, <laughs> may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Dear brothers and sisters, we can't help but thank God for you because your faith is flourishing and your love for one another is growing. We proudly tell God's other churches about your endurance and faithfulness. So be encouraged and be involved. Um, let me, uh, actually, I'm not going to pray. The team is going to lead us in, in a bl blessing that they are going to sing. I invite you to stand. If you know it and can sing along, sing it to each other. If you don't know it, then just receive this uh, from others as a, as a blessing for you as you go. Mm -hmm. 